Tonight, Trudeau's hand-picked censors declare that only 1% of what Rebel News publishes is news, so they won't give us a government journalism license. It's April 7th, and this is The Ezra Levant Show. Why should others go to jail Why? when you're a biggest carbon consumer I know? There's 8,500 customers here, and you won't give them an answer. The only thing I have to say to the government about why I publish it is because it's my bloody right to do so. Justin Trudeau's hand-picked government censorship panel has just declared that Rebel News journalists are not qualified to be news media. We just learned that over the past year, Trudeau has spent countless tax dollars on a hand-picked team of government censors who were studying Rebel News in secret. They never reached out to us or spoke with us or interviewed us. And that secretive government censorship panel went through 276 of our news stories. It took nearly a year to do it. Imagine government censors looking through 276 rebel news stories, many of which criticized government censorship. Now, you can like rebel news or not. That's your choice. If you don't like rebel news, unlike the CBC, you don't still have to pay for us. But Trudeau's government censorship panel made a ruling about us. They declared, get this, that, quote, Less than 1% of the content meets the criteria for original news content. <laughs> what? That's almost all we do. We're rebel news, not rebel sports or rebel weather. So Trudeau's government censorship panel says because of that, we are not legally a, quote, qualified Canadian journalism organization or QCJO, as they call it. That's a special legal term they've come up with. Uh, as the words plainly mean, it's government journalism accreditation. It's a government journalism license. So not only does that mean we're not allowed to attend government press conferences, it also punishes us under the Income Tax Act. I'll tell you more about that in a moment. But first, I, I want to tell you that we're fighting back. Because if we don't fight back now against this journalism license, they're going to destroy us. Like Trudeau is doing more and more to his peaceful political opponents, like the truckers. He wants to try to do to us what he did to the truckers. If he had his way, he'd put us in jail and seize our bank accounts. This is a step in that direction. Having a government panel declare legally that our journalists are not journalists because if they can do this to us, their largest independent critic left in Canada, they'll do this to anyone. They'll do this to you. They'll censor you, which is why we have to fight back now, not, not later. We have to fight back right now. There might not even be a later. So we're suing Trudeau. We filed the lawsuit today in the Federal Court of Canada. I want you to see the letter sent to us by Trudeau's government censorship panel, and I want you to see our lawsuit in reply. We've put both of them on a website called wearesuingtrudeau.com. Please read our lawsuit to learn just what they've done to us and why we have to fight back. Our lawsuit's just 16 pages long, and I think it's in pretty plain English. It's an anti-censorship lawsuit. It's a free speech lawsuit. The outcome of this lawsuit will affect us, obviously. But it'll affect everyone in Canada, anyone who wants to do journalism without a government license. And every citizen in Canada who wants the freedom to choose their own choice of news without some secret government panel deciding what or is or isn't real news. I don't know if there are other journalists who are being censored right now. I know if Trudeau succeeds, we won't be the last to be censored. I think we're likely the only ones who can and will fight back. Good news is we've got an absolute top-notch legal team because we cannot take any chances here. So please go to wearesuingtrudeau.com, read the punishment letter to us by Trudeau, and read our lawsuit in reply. And if you can, please help us crowdfund our lawyers if you can. But first, seriously, this Trudeau panel says we don't cover the news? That 99% of our news stories aren't really news? Are you kidding? News is almost all... We do. It's what makes us so popular. It's why people watch us. We've published, I don't know, maybe 40,000 news stories since we were born seven years ago. That's why Trudeau hates us. That's why the people love us. It's, it's what we do. Gentlemen, put your hands together for Ezra Levant of Rebel News. Yeah.
So what brought you out despite the uh, state of emergency that Doug Ford declared? Uh, I want to fight for my freedom. Um, I got, I'm not allowed to go to college because I'm unvaccinated and I can't play on any sports teams. So I'm fighting for my future. What's going future. on tonight, guys? Can you give me I a... Mean, we've just been hanging out. We, came, we drove up from Toronto. We brought supplies. We're going to be cooking tomorrow. And we're going to be feeding the truckers. Nice, man. I'm from Toronto, too. Nice to meet nice, you, bro. Man. Our specialty is getting out into the uh, out of the office and going into the streets, going to where the news is happening and turning our cameras on and showing it to you. The last two years have really been our time to shine. We've covered protests against lockdowns. We've covered the trucker rebellion. There was one day I remember when we had 17 different journalists in nine different cities covering the news. And it was on a weekend. Just take February 5th for an example. I was so proud on a weekend. Our guys were working so hard. I tweeted. This is what I said. I said, we've got reporters today in Milk River, Coots, Toronto, Ottawa, Quebec City, Vancouver, Edmonton, Calgary, and even Canberra, Australia. How is that possibly not news? Our reporters weren't just sitting in our offices giving our opinions on the world like most of the media party does, like this CBC star did. I do ask that because, uh, you know, given Canada's support of Ukraine in this current crisis with Russia, it, I don't know if it's far-fetched to ask, but, but there is concern that Russian actors could be continuing to fuel things uh, as, this, as this protest grows, but perhaps even instigating it from, from the outset. Well, again, I'm going to defer to uh, our uh, partners in the public safety, the uh, trained of, uh, officials and experts in that area. That's not news. That's a Trudeau conspiracy theory. Now, normally I wouldn't care what Trudeau thinks about us, but his hand-picked government censorship panel has tremendous power over us. They have the power of taxation and the power to tax is the power to destroy. And they're taking more and more powers. This is a journalism license from the government. And we were just denied it. Censorship is Trudeau's most passionate obsession. I don't understand why. He, he doesn't care about inflation. He doesn't care about housing prices or the cost of gas. He doesn't care about crime or national defense. He doesn't care about clean drinking water on reserves. But he is obsessed with silencing and punishing his critics, isn't he? And he hates Rebel News more than anyone. Do you remember Trudeau banned our journalists from covering the election debates in 2019 and then again in 2021? In those cases, we rushed to court to ask a judge to let us in. And in both cases, the judges agreed Trudeau's censors were violating our charter rights. And in both court cases, the court ordered Trudeau to let us in. But look at how angry and petty that made Trudeau. This is a clip from the 2021 election, hours after a judge told Trudeau that we were, in fact, journalists. Oh, he did not like that. Remember this? Maura Ugolini from Rebel News. Mr. Trudeau, the only reason that I'm allowed to ask you this question is because today the federal court ruled that the government doesn't have the right to determine who is or is not a journalist. This is the second election in a row that the court had to overturn your government. Do you still insist on being able to make that decision and why? First of all, questions around accreditation were handled by the press gallery and the consortium of uh, networks who have uh, strong perspectives on quality journalism and the important information that is shared with Canadians. Uh, the reality is organizations, organizations like yours uh, that continue to spread misinformation and disinformation on the science around vaccines, around how we're going to actually get through this pandemic and be there for each other and keep our kids safe is part of why we're seeing such um, unfortunate uh, anger and lack of understanding of basic science. And quite frankly, your I won't call it a media organization, your group of uh, individuals uh, need to take accountability for uh, some of the polarization that we're seeing in this country. And I think Canadians uh, are cluing into the fact that uh, there is a really important decision we take about the kind of country we want to see. And I salute all extraordinary hardworking journalists that put science and facts at the heart of what they do and ask me tough questions every day. Uh, but 
make sure that they are educating and informing Canadians from a broad range of perspectives, which is the last thing that you guys do. Trudeau is not prime ministerial. He's petty. And part is that he's so thin skinned. Listen to how he answered a great question from another reporter of ours who was there, Alexa Lavoie. Oh boy, look at this. Bonjour, Monsieur Trudeau, Alexa pour uh, Rebel News. Donc, Monsieur Trudeau, je vais revenir rapidement sur ce qui s'est passé hier. Vous avez dé diabolisé l'un des rares médias qui ne reçoit pas d'argent du gouvernement. Vous avez exprimé votre opinion en disant que nous propageons la désinformation. Si c'était vrai et si c'était le cas, la Cour, suprême, la Cour fédérale ne nous aurait pas permis d'être ici aujourd'hui. Je suis moi-même scientifique et je me base sur les faits. Ma question est la suivante. L'Israël est l'un des pays les plus vaccinés au monde. Ils sont rendus maintenant à leur quatrième rappel de vaccins. Ils ne considèrent plus que ceux qui ont reçu deux doses de vaccins sont pleinement vaccinés. Ma question est, plusieurs Québé euh, Canadiens ne désirent pas avoir une, un rappel de, de vaccins. Allez-vous leur enlever leurs privilèges reliés au passeport vaccinal et aurez-vous l'obligeance de répondre à ma question en tant que premier ministre ou allez-vous encore diaboliser mon média? J'ai partagé ma perspective sur ton organisation euh, hier soir. Je n'ai plus rien à dire. Ça demande bien qui vous vous êtes. Merci. Just hours earlier, the Federal Court of Canada had said that, in fact, yes, we are news media and yes, we must be accredited as such. But Trudeau refused. He, he refused to answer us. He thinks he's above the law. He doesn't care about the law except for as a weapon. Twice he censored us now. Twice we've gone to the federal court to appeal. Twice the judges of the federal court have said Trudeau was breaking the law and violating our rights to freedom of the press. And now we need to go back to court a third time. Let me show you a little bit more from their punishment letter. Then I want to show you more from our lawsuit. You'll, you'll see their punishment letter comes on Revenue Canada stationery. That is terrifying. In the past, Trudeau kept his politics out of the tax department. Not anymore. You now have to take a pro-liberal left-wing point of view to be compliant with the Income Tax Act. Trudeau's censors say, Rebel News does not produce original news content on the basis that the content was found to be largely opinion-based and focused on the promotion of one particular perspective. But the, but the same CRA has granted this QCJO journalism license to hard left-wing National Observer and the left-wing Toronto Star and the left-wing Narwhal and dozens of others. Those are obviously real news sources, sure, but they obviously only approach the news from one point of view, the hard left-wing point of view. And in the case of the National Observer and the Narwhal, they're environmental extremists too. The Narwhal actually used to be called D-Smog Blog. They're not balanced. They would never quote a skeptic of the theory of man-made global warming, except for to condemn him. They would never mention Donald Trump except to denounce him. So how do they get this CRA designation as licensed journalists? But we don't. So David Suzuki's 40 years of left-wing environmentalist journalism and the CBC, that's fine. But our opinions aren't fine, says the government. And then the government uses that to deny us a journalism license. But it doesn't even make any sense because if we offer an opinion on the news, which, which we sometimes do, It's obviously based on having shown you the news first. Here's the news. Now here's what we think about the news. I mean, when our reporter Lincoln Jay and our reporter Alexa Lavoie were live streaming for hours from the Ottawa truckers uh, uh, protest, I mean, sure, they were giving their comments along the way, but it's absurd to declare that 100 hours of news footage isn't still news. Isn't this whole thing absurd? But do I really have to justify our journalistic choices day to day and our opinions and our edits to some government bureaucrat. They're now the deciders of what is real news and what isn't. Our readers can't be the deciders. Trudeau's friends are the deciders now. There's another really weird part to their punishment letter. Anytime we give credit to another news organization, which I think is good practice, they claim that means it's not news anymore. Look at this. I mean, here they give a few examples. So seriously, just by crediting someone else for, let's say, breaking a scoop, which is the ethical thing to do, when we refer to someone else's previous work, that suddenly means that we're not, what we're doing is no longer news. I should say that the vast majority of our journalism is completely original. It's going places and pointing our camera at things. But seriously, 
They're claiming that when we give the odd shout out to other media, that makes us fake news or something. Literally every journalist does that or should be doing that. I mean, the Toronto Star, the CBC, they do that from time to time. But that's a reason Trudeau is denying our status. It's in the, it's in the letter. See for yourself. They even say that when I post short excerpts of my own work, that means we're not news. <laughs> I'm serious. It's in the letter. Who made up these bizarre rules? Well, we don't know all the members of the secret panel who sat in judgment of Rebel News, but their boss, Colette Brin, who was handpicked by Trudeau for this censorship position, she wrote a report blacklisting us that the CRA just adopted as their own. This is Canada's chief censor. I know you've never heard of her before. No one has. She, she hasn't been elected. She hasn't been vetted. She's just a trustworthy Trudeau appointee who knows what the boss wants. This is outrageous, of course. It's un-Canadian, of course. It's censorship, of course. It's against the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. It's a violation of freedom of the press. And the reason I'm worried about it is not because I want Trudeau to like me. It's because I want him to leave me alone and stop punishing independent media and our viewers. Because that's what denying us this QCJO journalism license will do. We're not applying for any government grant, which is a big thing you could get with this QCJO journalism license. We would never take Trudeau's money. We don't work for Trudeau, we work for you, our viewers. But you need one of these journalism licenses to issue a basic receipt to your paying subscribers for them to claim it's an expense on their taxes. So if you have a subscription to the left-wing pro-Trudeau Toronto Star, you can take your receipt and claim that subscription on, on your taxes because they have the Trudeau approved journalism license. Our viewers can't do that because Trudeau doesn't think we're real news. So he's punishing us, punishing our viewers. It's an attack on people who have a different point of view than Trudeau using the CRA. And just this week, Trudeau's new censorship minister, Pablo Rodriguez, announced that there will be even more laws censoring the media, especially in the internet. He says he's going to demand that Facebook and Google now artificially promote Canadian news sites, pumping them up in their algorithms but only those Trudeau-approved media with his journalism license get that promotion. Other media, by default, get pushed down. So it's not just Trudeau who is punishing journalists he doesn't like. He's forcing Facebook and Google to punish his enemies, too. I'll let you read their whole punishment letter for yourself. You really have to read. I just can't get over that one line that claims that we only produce 1% news. You really have to read it to see how extremist these people are. But I want you to take some hope in our lawsuit. And I want you to read it in full. It's only 16 pages long. It's at the website wearesuingtrudeau.com. I'm going to whip through it, okay? You can see we're suing the CRA because they're the ones, bizarrely, put in charge of issuing Trudeau's journalism license. In the first paragraph, we make our demand. Let me read. Rebel News seeks a declaration that the QCJO refusal is unreasonable and unlawful and an order quashing the QCJO refusal. Rebel News also seeks an order directing the Canada Revenue Agency to reverse the QCJO refusal and to designate Rebel News as a qualified Canadian journalism organization pursuant to the Income Tax Act. That's how we put it to the federal court when we were banned by Trudeau from attending the election debates. Now, we point out that Trudeau is one of the worst censors we've ever met so far in the world. Let me read. Rebel News has been granted media accreditation by governments in Canada, the United States, both the White House and Congress, United Kingdom, European Union, Sweden, Netherlands, Israel, Poland, and India. Rebel News has also been granted accreditation in partly free countries, such as Iraq and Morocco. Rebel News has also approved media at the United Kingdom Court of Appeal and the Old Bailey Central Criminal Court amongst others. So this is a Trudeau obsession. The rest of the world's fine with us. Let me show you paragraph 15 of the lawsuit. We, we asked to talk to these censors, to, to give them any info, to answer any questions they might have. They refused. It was all done in secret. Let me quote. Rebel News then followed up with CRA on its QCJO application numerous times between August 8, 2021 and November 10, 2021. On November 10, 2021, Rebel News was advised that its QCJO application had been reassigned to other CRA staff. Rebel News made multiple offers during this period to discuss its application with CRA staff. Upon further follow-up by Rebel News, CRA advised on January 26, 2022 and February 22, 
2022 that the QCJO application was still being reviewed and discussed internally. But that's a, a lie uh, by Trudeau, actually, as, as you can see. Um, they had already blacklisted us uh, before then. Look at the date on the letter. The punishment letter was dated before. They lied to us by pretending they were undecided. Look, the fix was in from the beginning, but they can't even get their story straight. Now, our lawsuit talks about how rigorously we take our journalism here, our fact-checking and our editing, but, but look at this. I think it's right. Rebel News is generally critical of government action or inaction and has a mission statement to, quote, tell the other side of the story. Rebel News is akin to an official opposition to legacy media and government narratives as a counterweight to the dominant point of view. Rebel News is one of the few Canadian media outlets having the power, freedom, and will to meaningfully challenge government figures and policies in the political views presented in Canada's legacy media. So, so when Trudeau's censorship panel says we take a particular point of view, well, I don't know, maybe we do sometimes like most humans do, but it's just that they hate our point of view because it's independent. And by the way, we don't just scorch Trudeau liberals. Ask Doug Ford and Jason Kenney, the alleged conservatives, how we treat them. I'll read more. Rebel News seeks to set uh, aside assumptions and prejudices and to find facts that are overlooked or ignored by mainstream media. Rebel News is a frequent critic of Canada's federal and provincial governments, and in particular of the governments of Alberta, Ontario, and the government of Canada, including their respective premiers and prime minister. I love this line. Rebel News is a member of the Independent Press Gallery of Canada. Rebel News has become a well-known media organization which is accessible to Canadians and uses its platform to not only share news stories, but to report on entities that offend civil liberties and hold those entities accountable. Rebel News takes independence of the press seriously. Exactly. Show me another news company in Canada that cares as much about civil liberties as we do. There are none. Niche. Rebel News does not promote a particular perspective any more than many other outlets that have previously received the QCJO designation. It seeks to tell another side of a story, regardless of the perspective that may that side may have. Sometimes that results in a conservative law and order oriented story, while other times the story is about overreach or selective enforcement by authorities, both being the other side of stories not being pursued by mainstream media. To do this, Rebel News seeks multiple perspectives and grants opportunities for rebuttal or to simply comment on the story, both of which allow Rebel News to present alternative perspectives as set out in the guidelines. That's true, isn't it? I think that's true. Okay, let me show you just one more part of the lawsuit. But please do read it in your, for yourself in full at wearesuingtrudeau.com. Okay, this is the last part I'll quote. Look at paragraph 36. We're demanding to look at all the records by Trudeau's censors, everything they looked at to make their censorship decision, their briefing notes, their research, their analysis, their conversations with politicians and the politician's staff, their draft reports, everything. What was the secret committee doing? Who was whispering in their ears? Was Gerald Butts involved again? So that's our lawsuit. In the last page there, you can see we've hired two outstanding lawyers, Robert Hawks, Queen's Counsel, and Sarah Miller the Top Gun lawyer who's been fighting for Pastor Arthur Pavlovsky because this is a brutal battle against censorship. Trudeau really does want to stamp us out. Look, we don't want any of Trudeau's money. We, we want our freedom and our independence. His journalism license is un-Canadian. And denying that license to us has the effect of censoring us, not just banning us from press conferences, which is bad enough, but also denying us equal treatment under the Income Tax Act and forcing Google and Facebook to censor us too. We have to fight back. We, we have to take them to the federal court where we have beat Trudeau's censors twice in a row now. Please go to wearesuingtrudeau.com. Read their punishment letter denying us the journalism license. Read our lawsuit in reply. Sign our petition to have the government drop this bizarre and un-Canadian Journalism license. Sign the petition against journalism licenses. And one last thing, if you can, please help us cover our legal costs. Please do. You can do that right there on the page. This is an important fight. Thanks for your support. You know, we're fighting for our own rights here, obviously. We're fighting for our viewers' rights, obviously. But I really believe we're fighting for all Canadians who care about freedom in the press and stopping Trudeau's censorship plans. Please go to wearesuingtrudeau.com. Thanks. 
Justin Trudeau's handpicked censors are denying us a government journalism license. We have to take them to court. There should be no journalism licenses in Canada. Go to wearesuingtrudeau.com to see their denial letter to us and to see our lawsuit in reply.